Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ayyul Ahbab Continuing on in our series about akhlaq Or manners That should be observed By the believers, by the Muslim and these manners are the manners of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Specifically, Ahl Sunnah should adhere to these manners because if someone is from Ahl Sunnah, then they are trying to exhibit the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, which means Muhammad ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, who had the best of manners, the best of akhlaq, as Ummana Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when she was asked about him alayhi salatu wasallam she said that his khuluquhu al-Qur'an that his his manners were the Qur'an so the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam in essence he was the perfect example of what a person, the perfect and highest example of what illustrates the beauty of the Quran. Alayhi salatu was salam. Ayyul Ahbab, Mawdu al Akhlaq, the subject of Akhlaq. What does Akhlaq entail? What does it entail? It entails, according to Khalid al-Kharaz, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he mentions about the subject of akhlaq. He says, Huwa kullu ma yatasal bil amal al-Muslim wa nishatihi wa ma yata'alak bi alaqatihi bi rabbihi wa alaqatihi ma nafsihi wa alaqatuhu وعلاقاته مع غيره من بني جنسه وما يحيط به من حيوان وجماد. He said, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala preserve him. He said about akhlaq that it is everything that relates to the character and activity of a Muslim. And what relates to the relation, the relationships that he has with his Lord, the relationship that he has with his Lord, Azza wa Jal. And the relationship he has, he or she has, with his or her self. And the relationship he has with other than him from amongst mankind. And what is related or what is what encompasses his relationship with animals and uh, and uh, inanimate objects that all of this has to do with akhlaq so how you deal with your parents how you deal with your neighbors how you deal with your family how you deal with non-family members how you deal with Muslim and non-Muslim, how you deal with everything, even the, the animals, even the cats, even the dogs, even the ants, how you deal with everything, this is included in the meaning of uh, akhlaq. Ayul Ahbab, I don't think it's a mystery to any of us the importance of having good and righteous conduct. And some of the nasus that comes from the Qur'an uh, that verifies for us the importance of having righteous akhlaq and that righteous akhlaq al akhlaq al hasana imtithal li amri Allah wa rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that righteous manners righteous akhlaq is adhering to 
the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger alayhi salatu was salam. And all throughout the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we have ample adilla or evidences to support this. One of the ayat, one of the verses in the Quran, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem, Qala subhana, inna Allah ya'muru يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي. الله سبحانه وتعالى says in سورة النحل. He says to بارك وتعالى. He says verily Allah commands you with justice and righteousness and maintaining the ties of kinship and prohibit you from evil from evil and wickedness and evil and oppression or transgression so this ayat verifies for us the importance of having righteous conduct, righteous manners, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with this. He commands us to be just. He commands us to be righteous and upright. He commands us to maintain the ties of kinship and giving everyone their due rights. And he prohibits us from things, all types of wickedness, from committing adultery and shamefulness, things that are shameful. And anything else that can be uh, included in the general term of munkar and wickedness and fasha, you know, whether it be wicked speech, whether it be wicked uh, dealings and transactions, cheating and, and lying and stealing from others, all of these things are prohibited and oppression. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Karim, Khudul Afu will amru. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Kareem in Surah Al-A'raf Qala Tabarak wa ta'ala in pardon you know uh, pardon and command with goodness and avoid the ignorant ones. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, orders us to be of those people who pardon, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is off pardoning and off forgiving. Ar Rahman ar Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and He's the most merciful to His creatures. And as an additional benefit, also contained in that ayat, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, it, what we learn from this ayat as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to avoid the jahilin, be away from them, avoid them. Those people who are ignorant, who have nothing benefit, beneficial to offer, letting us know that ignorance is madhmum in Islam. To remain in an ignorant state, to not educate ourselves Islamically, is a part of, is something madhmum, it's something negative, a negative characteristic to uh, to, to have and that by practicing and seeking knowledge and benefiting ourselves that these activities are praiseworthy characteristics of the believer and those are the type of characteristics that will help us in our akhlaq and manners because how can you know what righteousness is and what sinfulness is except with ilm, except with knowledge and Shaykh and Shaykh Ibrahim Rahili, Hafidh Allah Ta'ala, was mentioning in uh, a dars, a series of lectures that he has, which is entitled, uh, it's a, a book of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah about Amr bin Maruf and Nayan al Munkar, about commanding the good and forbidding the evil. And one of the things that Shaykh mentioned um, as a editorial, as a comment to what Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah was saying, is the importance of that a person must know. If they want to command the good and forbid the evil, they must have knowledge. That you have to know 
كيف تأمر تأمر بمعروف وتنهى عن المنكر ولا تعرف المنكر ولا تعرف المعروف how can you know what how can you command to the good if you don't know what good is you don't know the masalih wa mafasid you don't know the the harms and benefits of commanding good in that situation you don't have fiqh you don't have understanding of the religion to know how to put everything in its proper place which is hikmah hikmah wisdom is putting everything in its proper place in its appropriate place so there may be a time you may see a munkar you may see something sinful but it may not be the time to prohibit it maybe the people their level of iman is not there maybe it will cause a greater munkar a greater harm by commanding the good in that situation so then it would be more uh, more beneficial there will be maslaha a'zam by leading commanding the good in that situation so all of this comes with ilm and fiqh and wisdom of the religion and that only comes through uh studying so you can't command the good and forbid the evil without knowledge and commanding the good and forbidding the evil is a part of akhlaq it's a part of mannerisms righteous mannerisms that the muslim these are characteristics of the believer and we ask Allah the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who practice what we preach and be of those who have righteous mannerisms and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of all of our shortcomings and may Allah bless us all with ikhlas with thabat ala sunnati nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam